But now we end up having this outstanding matchup again. You know, I wondered, is there any possible way this could live up to Celtics Raptors? And it's on track to. All right, Kev. So Boston had Marcus Smart yelling in the locker room. We had talked right after that game last Thursday and said we liked it. We liked the idea of them showing a lot of fight. And I thought that this could reap benefits. And not only that, they got the surge of getting Gordon Hayward back in the lineup and they were able to win game three. And so now that series is 2-1. I don't know about you, but... When I when I was talking earlier about how you fake can't fake desperate, I Boston, like you just saw a team that seemed to be the aggressor, seemed to be really communicating. Every time they went down on the defensive end, they were yelling out to each other. Jalen Brown's jumping in what appeared to be every passing lane. And they just fe- felt so much more aggressive and confident in that game against the team that I thought in the first two games was the aggressive, confident team. You know, the Miami Heat. I saw I saw a different Boston team in game three than I had seen in the first two. Marcus Smart talked yesterday uh, on Monday during his media availability, and he said like that conversation in the locker room was electrifying he said we weren't supposed to be happy down 2-0 and he he said the way I responded and the way we responded shows that we're closer than ever and that is really it is like a good follow-up of what we talked about in terms of you need that you need that push when things aren't going right you need that voice in that locker room to try to get things straight and what we did see in game three was a Celtics team that was far more engaged on both ends of the floor and a team that needs to carry that mindset throughout the rest of the series because you better bet that Miami and Eric Spolstra and that coaching staff are going to come back with some type of adjustments in order to counter what Boston did, putting Smart on Goran Dragic, putting you know Kemba Walker on Jay Crowder, which created cross matches in transition going the other way, attacking Duncan Robinson, at will, especially early in that game. They did so many different things in that game that now Miami's going to respond, and Boston's also going to have to be prepared for what those responses might be. And that's what makes the playoffs, from a tactical point of view, so fun to watch, especially with two really good coaches in Spo and Stevens. Uh, so Boston, like, there's going to be changes that happen around you, but you need to retain that mindset in order to beat a team like Miami that always plays like that. Well, and we talked about, and you said you had thought you had underrated the loss of Gordon Hayward after watching the first two games. You know, sometimes it's not just the injury, it's the injury versus the drop-off, right? And and if the drop-off is extreme versus, okay, you can, you're, you're able to hold water on this, then obviously the outcome is is undesirable. And with Hayward, it's the difference between them going to the, their bench and bringing Gordon Hayward off first or Brad Wanamaker off first. <laughs> and it, so it is extreme, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I think it's like, it's kind of like we just saw with the Giants, not to move over to the NFL too much, but we just saw it's like, okay, Saquon Barkley's out. Okay, well, now we're going to play Wayne Gallman or Deion Lewis. It's like, oh, God, right? <laughs> like, for them, like it, it's not like they just have somebody they can plug in. And Boston, when you spend so much money on fantastic players, then your bench is going to be light. And so you just saw it the other night. When they go to their bench and the guy they bring off their bench is somebody that absolutely could be a starter on the team. Well, that's a whole different world. And you saw them with those four guys out there. And I gotta be honest. I thought he looked fine. I did not think like, if you would not have told me Gordon Hayward was coming off of, you know, an injury that had kept him out for a good long while. I would not have noticed, would you? No, I thought he would have had no would have had no, no idea. I mean, yeah. you couldn't look at the box score necessarily and feel how great he played, but watching the game, it was apparent yes. how great of a performance that he had facilitating the ball, you know, always in the right place on the defensive end of the court, making quick decisions. He really helped against the zone with his passing ability. I mean, he's a difference maker, man. I, I Like I said last week, I feel like I underrated the loss. 
And seeing him back shows his importance in this series. Just having that extra guy who can do something for you off the dribble. It's also an extra guy that could shoot over or between that zone and Mm -hmm. get in the seams. It is also a guy that just stretches the court even more. He has to be honored all the way out to wherever he is standing. Therefore, you are creating more space for not good, elite-level one-on-one players in Tatum and Kemba, and then a really good one in Brown. Brown could obviously get his dribbling. Brown's gotten much really better. His, game. his dribbling's gotten much better. Like, he can go and get his own shot, right, without just being a slasher or a catch-and-shoot. He, he could get his own shot. But those other two, the more space you can create for Kemba and Tatum, the better. And Hayward obviously does that by having to be honored even 30 feet away from the basket. For sure. And, you know, with Boston, we saw last week, I believe it was game two, Boston ran out a lineup with Tatum, Brown, Walker, Smart, and Wanamaker for a short stint. And I remember seeing that thinking to myself, they're going to play this with Hayward instead of Wanamaker. And they did. They they put it out there and it like shredded the Miami Heat with their best five players on the court going small. Uh, I wonder how much we see that ag- again. And if they do do it again, how does Miami respond and try to make them pay for their s- small size on the court with Bam at a bio? Because uh, I feel like there's ways to try to exploit that on for the, on the def- when you're on offense. If you're in Miami and when Boston's on defense. But, like, when you have five guys on the court, Smart, who defends bigger than he is, Tatum, who is not small by any means with his size and length, you know, and then some big wings and Brown and Hayward with Kemba at point guard, that's it's small. You don't have a traditional big out there. You don't, you don't have Daniel Tice or Robert Williams, but it's a versatile team that all five of them can attack. And I would imagine that we're going to see that again from the Celtics. They played it for seven minutes in game three. First time we've seen it since the regular season when they did it for only 18 minutes throughout the entire year. If Boston brings that back again, I look forward to seeing what Miami and Spolster is ready to do in order to try to fight what they were able to do in game three, which was really do whatever they want, That's right. especially on the defensive end uh, with their switching and, and and really the energy that they brought swarming off the ball. Uh, I wonder what Miami's plan is there. Well, and there was super – there, there were plays down that stretch where it looked like Miami was going to fight all the way back possibly. And they were getting the stops and they were getting the buckets. And I think it was Kemba that hit the huge three that put them up eight. I mean, they – you know, Boston was forced to make huge plays to uh, – you know, like that, that team just kept – it felt like Miami, it felt the whole game Boston was in control and Miami just kept on rising from the dead, right? Yeah. Like you leave them and they make you make the plays to win the game. And that was even in that one where you knew that Boston was going to be so desperate. But now we end up having this outstanding matchup again. You know, I wondered, is there any possible way this could live up to Celtics Raptors? And it's on track to. You know what I mean? And I don't know how you feel, Kev. I, after watching so much basketball of these other teams, the Heat, the Raptors, and the Celtics, I'm not sure. I know that the 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 Heat were the ones that disposed of Milwaukee. I'm not so sure that I don't believe. In fact, I think I do believe that Boston and Toronto would have beaten them too. That in this, in retrospect, that Milwaukee team – who got handled so much by Miami, they might have lost to all three of those. They might end up being the fourth best of those teams. Seriously, by the time the bubble and the playoffs were going on. I I am much more impressed with those teams than I ever was Milwaukee, honestly. I mean, for for what it's worth, I mean, the way Toronto beat Milwaukee last year, they showed the blueprint, the Giannis rules of what Miami did this year. Yep, pretty similar with their type of defense. And with Boston, they're not quite as equipped. They don't have that. Uh, they use Shemi Ojale in that Giannis stopper role. They don't have a Bam Adebayo to do that like Miami does. But, you know, Boston maybe could have followed that template and also presented problems with their depth of really good wings and, and lead ball handlers to make 
things hard on Milwaukee. I it, I think it would have been a closer series for the Bucks if they had faced Toronto or Boston, just because of the way those teams match up. Miami was is perfectly yep. built to beat the Bucks, which they did. Uh, the Raptors and Celtics would have made it a really tough series, that's for sure. That, that's why, like we talked about it for months, dude. The the East is really, really, really good, and it wasn't going to be some cakewalk for the Bucks, nor is it for the wasn't for the Raptors losing last round, nor is it for the Celtics or the Heat. This is probably going to go deep, six or seven games. Mm-hmm.